wonderful name. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I welcome you to this wonderful place. That's a very good mistake you made this morning. And when you come here, you know you have to read your word. Amen. That is what, that's how we identify ourselves. As a people that has exalted the word of God. Because God also exalted his word. Amen. And we also we come together with God and exalt his word. Amen. Yeah, so let us uh, come together. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, and also Luke chapter 21. Let me start from Luke chapter 12, not chapter 21. What you find written in Luke chapter 21 is also written in John 16, and it is also written in Matthew chapter 24. It talks about the same time. You also find it in Mark chapter 13. And uh, these, the, 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 the events and the things written in those times, they are one. Praise the Lord. So it is just another perspective from the physician Luke. So Luke chapter 21 verse 16. These same words you find them in Matthew 24. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends and some of you shall cause and they are, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death imagine it is your friend that causes you to be put to death your parent your kinfolk your friends that tough time right ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but there shall not a hair of your head perish that is mass God will defend them. In your patience, possess your soul, possess your souls. They need patience at that time. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Praise the wonderful name. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter there into verse 25 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexities the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts men's hearts failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Let us believe and pray. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is your word. We always believe from our heart that there is a blessing in it by just reading it, O oh God. May we all be attracted to it. The matter is from the east. They were attracted to that word. Amen. They came traveling from distance Amen. because they love that word. Amen. And the thing that connects us as members of the body of Christ, Amen. fitly joined together, Amen. is the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. who is our Lord, who is the word of God. Amen. As we get attracted to your word, as we read it, as we as we listen and as we get nourished by it, oh God, Amen. may you just give us calmness, Amen. give us peace quicken our memories and give us understanding. It's in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I do pray, trust in and believe in. Amen. amen and amen. You may have the comforts of your seats. At least I'm the one standing now. Amen and amen. Let us turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3. Amen. Amen. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verse, verse 3. So we've seen in Luke 21, it's not going to be a good time. And now Luke chapter 12, verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. Not yet. Meaning there is a time yes. they will have to resist unto blood. Amen. There is a time they have to come and resist until they die. Amen. Until their blood is shed. Yes. I want you to remember, you will not shed your blood believe the Lord Jesus Christ. You only shed blood when you are cutting your own vegetables. Even pastor this morning told me he shed a little bit of some blood. So, he, But this 
shedding of blood is different. Yes. It is for something you hold on to. Amen. And Jesus and the, the, the author of the Hebrews is saying, you've not yet shed that blood. Yeah. And uh, let us continue reading. For you have not yet resisted unto the blood, striving against sin. That sin is that sin is actually the mark of the beast. Amen. That sin is actually a, aligning yourself with the Antichrist. Yes. Praise the wonderful name. Yes. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My sons, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art being rebuked. The Hebrew is saying it, that when that time comes, don't faint. When that time you are going to shed blood comes, remember, it is God chastising you. And this morning I want us to share on the attitude of the remnant in the great tribulation. Amen. The last time I was here, we were saying about the faithful in the great tribulation. There are people that are going to hold on to the testimony despite the pressure by the Antichrist to reject who God is. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And again, there is the, 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 a way the Antichrist is going to oppress and persecute them. And God is going to tell them, this is the way God wants them to behave. God is concerned about attitude. God is concerned about the demeanor of people. Praise the wonderful name. God doesn't want them to act victims and act as people trying to survive. Praise the wonderful name. When God came down in Genesis and he met Cain, he says, why is your countenance fallen? Praise the wonderful name. Meaning God was concerned on how, on how Cain looked like. Praise the wonderful name. He was concerned on the attitude of that person. What, what, how, how are you thinking? Praise the wonderful name. Because your attitude attracts blessings and curses in your life. Praise the wonderful name. Your attitude towards the things of God, even the word itself, when it is being preached and when it is being read, your attitude towards it will determine are you going to receive the blessing? Or are you going to leave this place the same way you came? Praise the wonderful name. There was a time there was a farmer in the Bible and God had, through Elisha, spoke of a provision that is going to come. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But there were some people with a particular kind of attitude. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And what did Elisha say? You will see it and you will not partake of it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we want to be a people that understand my attitude matters. Amen. When I'm approaching God, my attitude matters. Amen. When I approach the word of God, Amen. my attitude matters. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we see even the woman with the issue of blood. He never read something in the Bible, but he spoke to himself. Amen. He understood something about this man. Amen. He said, if I could but just touch Amen. the helm of his garment. Amen. He did not need the twelve apostles. Amen. Even didn't need the validation of Jesus. No. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And Jesus said, someone touched him. And then they said, no, no one has touched you. I said, someone touched Jesus at that moment. Amen. He didn't touch him physically. Yes. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Those disciples didn't understand. Amen. What kind of touching is this? Because when Jesus is passing in the crowd, he's being touched by people. Amen. But there was a person with like a different Special. kind of attitude. Amen. He received a blessing. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So when approaching everything that God has, watch your attitude. Amen. When you are wrong, watch your attitude. Amen. When you are being corrected, watch your attitude. Amen. When you are being chastised by God, watch your attitude. Amen. When you are being advised, when you are being given counsel, watch your attitude. Amen. When you are going through any troublous Amen. situation in your life, Amen. watch your attitude. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That is something that is so key to all of us. Amen. That is our state. Amen. Our standing, we are complete in Christ. Amen. Our standing, God accepts us. But our attitude is in our state. Amen. And we want at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. We have rewards. Amen. When they were going to the promised land, by their attitude, they murmured. And when they murmured, they lost it. Praise the wonderful name. Were they God's children? Why did God deliver them with a mighty hand? Did God forsake them? No, God kept and always blessed them. But their attitude determined different aspects of their journey. Praise the wonderful name. So attitude matters. So as we are sharing on the attitude of the remnant in the great tribulation, God is concerned about them. God wants them to behave in a particular manner. God watches about their conduct. Praise the wonderful name. Through times of tribulation. And we also as the members of the body of Christ. Don't wash your hands off. Praise the wonderful name. When the Bible is read, don't be like Pilate. 
There are people that always say, tell them. No, don't have that attitude. I thank God that attitude is, as it has never been here. That when the word is being preached, people say, tell them. Amen. Tell them. No. That is Pilate that says the word is before him. And then he says, he washes his hands. He says, no, this is in your ule. No. You are sitting there and then unagawa neno. I wish on this one, nangekua ile in your ule. Oh, he will go in the pale. Praise on the name. But take it. It is important to all of us. It matters to all of us. Amen and amen. amen. So what are we seeing here in Hebrews chapter 12? God talks about chastisement. Yes. God talks about when you see that you are in a particular perilous and particular troublous situation. Watch your attitude. Praise God. Yes. And uh, let us, let, when we read Matthew chapter 3 now, because uh, I'll come back to it. But let me just read it before I leave it because I may forget. Verse, uh, verse 11. Let me jump to verse 11. Now know just turning from the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 11. Now, not just turning from the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous nevertheless. Afterward, it yields peaceable fruit of righteousness Amen. unto them which are exercised thereby. After just tenings of God, Amen. there is a fruit of righteousness that comes out of it. Praise on the name. So we see our attitude matters, and when God chastises his children, it's with a view of making them heirs. Praise God. Amen. Not just heirs. Remember, the Israelites are heirs of salvation. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They always were yearning and waiting for salvation. Amen. And for them to receive that salvation, John says this. We always think of the statements of John when he was testifying of the coming of Jesus. But John said there was something in the hand of Jesus. But we don't, always, don't want to look at it. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 he says, indeed I baptize with water. But there is a one that comes after me. Praise the wonderful name. Let me read it to you. Perhaps this scripture will read it, but we just pass it casually. Praise God. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. And it says this. I indeed baptize you with the water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Those are two things. Praise the wonderful name. The Holy Ghost is, 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 is the spirit that helps them to keep the commandment. Praise the wonderful name. But what is the fire? Praise God. Verse 12. Whose fun is in his hand? Have you ever wondered about that statement? That when Jesus is coming, his fun is in his hand. Praise the wonderful name. Did we see that in the first coming? Praise God. But John, when he, he saw Jesus coming, he said there's something he's coming with. He has a fun in his hand. Praise God. And he will thoroughly patch his flower or flower and gather his wheat into a garner. Praise the wonderful name. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenching fire. Praise the wonderful name. The fire that is coming is going to do two things. It's going to destroy the rebellious people and it's going to purify the remnant. Praise the wonderful name. That is what is coming with the fun. The elect are going to be chastised and the rebellious and apostate Israel are going to be died because of what? Because of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Did we see that in the first coming? No. Meaning, there is no second coming without a tribulation. Yeah. And if you're a person waiting for the second coming, also prepare for the tribulation. Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. God will labor a lot of time trying to divide the rapture coming and the second coming. Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. We realize Elijah is connected with the second coming. Yeah. Elijah is connected with the coming kingdom. Praise the wonderful name. Also, tribulation is connected with the second coming. Amen. If you are going to be raptured, you are not going to go through it. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because tribulation is the period after the rapture and before the second coming. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And in this period, the Son of Man is going to be revealed. If you are waiting for the Son of Man to be revealed, you have to be in the time of tribulation. Amen. Because the Son of Man is revealed at dark times. Praise the wonderful name. In the evening time. Yes. It 
it was not a good time to be in praise and the name. So if you talk about the revelation of the Son of Man, again, you know the tribulation belongs to you. Praise God. Amen. You have to, you have to, that is how it is, Brother Gilbert. Praise and the name. So we see, this, we, so we cannot be part of that great tribulation. Praise God. Which is going to be in the future. Which God is going to, you may, you may ask yourself, what is the point of tribulation? Person may ask that question, such a yeah. question. What is the point of tribulation? Praise on the name. Amen. But again, you have to realize the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that he told Jeremiah, I want you to go to the potter's house. Praise God. Amen. And when Jeremiah entered the potter's house, he saw a potter working with his hand on a vessel. Praise God. Amen. And the vessel was mad in his hand. Praise on the name. Amen. And he had to break it again Amen. and remake it. Praise God. Amen. That is why there is a new covenant. Amen. Before the, When the new covenant is coming, it is coming to a people that are parched. It's coming to a little flock. Praise on the name. Amen. So we see tribulation is for purposes of chastising these people and to judge the Antichrist. Yes. Praise on the name. Amen. And the Antichrist, because he is going to be judged, he's going to persecute the people. Amen. Praise God. So what are we seeing here? We are seeing there is a fan which is a separator. We are seeing a party and we are seeing that there is going to be a gathering of the people that have gone through the party. Praise on the full name. So when Christ comes the second time, remember I'm talking about the second coming and I've told you the tribulation precedes the second coming. Praise God. Amen. The tribulation precedes the revealing of the Son of Man in the sky. Praise God. And when they are in this season, when they are in this moment, the elect of God are going to go through some chastisement. And the chastisement is, it is, it is, a, it is, a, it is a correction from the Father to make this person an heir. Praise on the full name. And we've seen that there are diverse ways God chastises the children of Israel. Praise God. And these ways that God chastises them, we realize that they are in there are five of them. Praise God. Amen. We saw the first cause of chastisement, the second cause of chastisement. The first cause was in the book of Judges. Praise God. Amen. We saw the second cause of chastisement when the nation was broken into two. Praise on the full name. Amen. We saw famine as 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 a, as, 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 as an agent of chastising the children of Israel Amen. in the third cause of chastisement. Praise God. Amen. We are going to see sword and pestilence, diverse ways. God is going to chastise his children. Praise God. Amen. And when God is chastising these people, they are going to come out of it righteous. Amen. They are going to come out of it fruitful. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. When you read the book of Luke, the pruning is to make the branch more fruitful. Praise on the full name. Amen. Even though it says that he's going to cut a fruitful branch. The branch is still fruitful, but he's still going to be to go through party yes. to become more fruitful. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. So we see now these people, God is going to chastise them at that moment Amen. because of disobedience. Yes. Praise on the full name. Amen. They are not just going to go through tribulation for the sake of it. Praise God. They are going to go through it because God deals with Israel on blessings and curses. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And if they are going to be the head of the nation, if they are going to be a different kind of a people, if they are going to receive a former reign and a latter reign, they have to give the commandments. Amen. If they are going to be a people that when they go to war and win, they have to keep the commandments. Amen. Praise on the name. So everything that they had was connected to obedience. Amen. Praise on the name. Amen. So you see now that they are going, even when they were taken captive to Babylon, it was because of disobedience to the laws of God. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. They never allowed the land to have a Sabbath. Amen. So God had to take them away in a strange land that the land could have a Sabbath. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we realize for them, everything matters. Amen. Even the land sins. Praise God. Amen. The land needs cleansing. Yes. Praise on the full name. Amen. So we realize now that the way God deals with them is so specific to that land which is up there. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. It's not Africa. And God deals with them in timings. Praise God. Amen. So we see now that in that season of tribulation, in that great tribulation, it is going to be according to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. If I'm just reading it for you as I'm 
laying up because I don't want to assume who will read it. Praise God. Amen. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. If you, if you get it, say amen. amen. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince that stands for the children of thy people. That is the Jews. Praise God. Amen. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall not be found written in the book. Praise God. Amen. So we see now the Bible talks about a great troublous time. Praise God. Amen. Jesus talks about it. All the writers of the gospel mentioned it. Praise on the full name. There are some stories you'll find in Luke and not find in Matthew or Mark. Praise on the full name. Amen. There are some stories you'll find in Matthew, you'll not find in Mark or all the other gospels. Praise God. Amen. But this event of the last days is written in all the gospels. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. Because it mattered to these people. Yes. Because these people have been given a time. Mm. Praise God. So before now the second coming, before they see the Son of Man being revealed in the sky, they are going to go through a very troublous time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 it talks about that, that, that season, that season of trouble, that season that Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse, verse, verse 7 and it says this are you with me? Amen. are we moving together? Amen. I don't want to leave you behind, praise God Amen. I want you to understand, I will connect it to you for now just just bear, just now study with me praise God, Amen. verse 6 ask ye now and see whether a man does travel with a child now that is a strange question imagine how the Bible is written huh? wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman traveling yes. and all faces are turned into paleness mm -hmm. because why are they doing that how why should the face be pale it's not a good time no. it's a tough time yes. alas for that day is great mm -hmm. for that day is great mm -hmm. so that night is like it it is even the time of jacob's trouble, trouble. but do you know what the comfort is Amen. but he shall be saved Praise on the name. So we realize there is a particular time that is a time of Jacob's trouble. There is a particular time in the Bible that is called the Great Tribulation. Praise on the name. And this time is only found within the 70 weeks. Praise on the name. Amen. It can only be found within the 70 weeks. But me as a member of the body of Christ, I'm not given time. I'm not Amen. given moons. Amen. I'm not given Sabbath to be. Praise on the full name. So this Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, is one thing, and it belongs to them. Praise God. And that is what we are sharing with today. So we are seeing that there are going to be two things that are going to happen during the tribulation, which will be the chastisement of God and the judgment of the rebellious people. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And we are going to see that if God could get from me Daniel chapter 9 verse 25 to 27 I will be very grateful Daniel 9 chapter, Daniel chapter 9 verse 25 to 27 Daniel 9 25 to 27 read that for me now therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to, the, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks the streets shall be built again amen. and the wall even in troublous times amen and after three score and two weeks shall amen. messiah be cut off amen but not for himself uh -huh. and for the people of the prince amen. that shall come shall destroy the city uh -huh. and the sanctuary and uh -huh. the end thereof uh -huh. shall be with a flower uh -huh. and to the end of the wall uh -huh. desolation at desolations are determined uh -huh. and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week uh -huh. and in the midst of the week uh -huh. he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease uh -huh. for the ever spreading of abomination he shall make it desolate even until the com com 
consummation uh -huh. and the becoming shall be poured upon the desolate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. What do we see? I want us to emphasize on the last verse that he shall confirm. Who is the he? It's the Antichrist. Praise on the full name. Amen. He shall confirm the covenant with many. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. And in the middle of the week, he will break the covenant. Yes. Praise on the full name. Amen. You know, a week, the middle of the week is three and a half. Yes. Praise God. Amen. So after, in the middle, he's going to break the covenant. And he's now going to persecute the people. Praise on the full name. Amen. For a season, they were going together. Praise on the full name. Amen. Remember, as Pastor had shared with us here, that the Antichrist has two faces. Praise God. Amen. There is a way he comes as an imitator of Christ. And in his last period, he's going to be an opposer of Christ. Praise on the full name. He is going to come in a way that he's going the rise of the Antichrist and the rule of the Antichrist. Praise on the full name. He's going to come as a man of sin, as a person that is pious, as a person that is calm, as a person that is agreeable with every individual. Praise on the full name. As a person that is, is charming, as a person that has the answer to every global issue. Praise on the full name. As a person that is desirable, that even the people of the covenant, the people of the covenant, which are Israel, shall love him. And he's going to confirm a covenant with them. Praise on the full name. And many others from the south, from the east, from the west. Praise on the full name. And he's going to come to a place and break the covenant. Praise on the full name. If our people are going to be persecuted, what will make this man break the covenant? Praise on the full name. What will make this man come to a place and disregard the, 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 the covenant they had had together with these people? Praise on the full name. Because the Bible clearly says, in the middle of the covenant, in the middle of the week, he will break the covenant. Amen. And this covenant that he is having with them, do you know he will deceive the people into the new covenant? That's right, that's right. Praise on the full name. Amen. Because these people are waiting for the New Testament. Amen. Praise on the full name. And this man will come and say, this is the cup of my testament. Amen. This is, drink it, and you shall have eternal life. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. These people will enter an agreement with this man, thinking it is the right person. Praise on the full name. Amen. In John chapter, as people just come in my mind, John chapter 16, it is, it is when Jesus is talking about, when Jesus is praying for the, for the apostles before he goes, it, he told them something that it is, it is John chapter 16, verse, uh, verse 1. John chapter 16, the beginning. If I get it. John 16. Are you there? Amen. He talks about how he talks about how he come deceiving them. How there are going to be deceptions in that moment. Verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yeah. The time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he is doing God a service. Now that is strange. Praise on the full name. Whosoever kills you is doing God a service. Because remember, the Bible says in Luke chapter 21 that your brothers are going to betray you. That your friends are going to betray you. And they are going to betray you even unto death. Do you think they, they thought they are doing... It tells you they are thinking that they are doing God a service. Praise on the full name. So look at how the Antichrist would have come and confirm a covenant to the many until people will believe him. Praise on the full name. But Elijah will be there. Moses will be there. Praise on the full name. They will tell the people, this is not the true Messiah. This is not the one that we are waiting for. Praise on the full name. But he's going to confirm a covenant to the many. People are going to love this man. Praise on the full name. Remember what I'm talking about? The attitude of the remnant in the great tribulation. There is a time this antichrist is going to come against them. Praise on the full name. But in the beginning, he did not come like that. In the beginning, he came with, according to Psalms chapter 55, his words were like butter. Praise on the full name. He was, his words were pleasant. Praise on the full name. So we realize now that in the beginning now of the, 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 that, that prophetic last week, it is, it is, it, it, there is no persecution. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. Just begins in a simple way. Amen. The white horse. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. Conquering and conquering without bloodshed. 
There are no people that are dying at that moment. Amen. <laughs> it's a wonderful name. Amen. So it is just a good time for the people. Remember what the Bible tells us? That the, when the world shall say peace, peace. You remember the Bible? Yes. Have you read your scripture? Yes. Is it not written in the Bible? That when they say peace, 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 Amen. then sudden destruction. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Such sudden destruction. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we see now that for a season it's going to be a good time. For a season is going to be a merry for the people. Yeah. They are going to offer sacrifices in the temple. They are going to worship their God. Praise the wonderful name. But remember that Christ is still in his campaign. Yeah. Winning the hearts of men. Right. Because in the book of Revelation it says that the kings of the earth gave their kingdom to the beast. Right. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That is Revelation chapter 17. So, so they are going to come to a place and this man is going to find favor in the sight of men. Amen. They are going to love him. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Has persecution started? No. no. But is there a time persecution will start? Yes. yes. Is there something that will motivate the Antichrist to persecute these people? Yes. yes. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we see now that they are, they are, they are enjoying they are, they are enjoying service in the temple. They have built the temple. They, everything is so well for them. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And now something happens. And I want you to notice I want you to notice one thing here. That the issue of all persecution in the Bible has been always around God. Praise the wonderful name. I want you to notice there is something that happens. There is something that God does that motivates the, any power on earth to persecute the people. Praise the wonderful name. When we see when Moses came, these people were living a good life. They were doing Pharaoh used to provide straw for them to make bricks. Praise the wonderful name. So Pharaoh would come and say, you as my laborers, I want you to make bricks. And since you are making bricks for me, they used to use straw. Straw are building materials. They are materials used to make bricks. Praise the wonderful name. So who provided the straw? Pharaoh provides for it. So the only thing that they, 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 the children of Israel, that they, they thought that they were the servants of Pharaoh. So they think that these servants of Pharaoh in quotes, because that's what they called themselves when the things were tough. They, what they used to do was, Pharaoh provides the materials, they make the bricks. Praise the wonderful name. Pharaoh provides the material, they make the bricks. Things are so easy. But Moses comes from the wilderness with something. Praise the wonderful name. Moses comes, he gathers the elders. That is in Exodus chapter 4. I'm just mentioning them. Praise God. In Exodus chapter 4, he gathers the elders. And then he tells the elders, you know, before even Moses reaches Egypt, God speaks to Aaron and Aaron goes and meets Moses along the way. And Moses tells Aaron of the great things that are happened in the wilderness. Praise the wonderful name. And then now when Moses reaches or arrives in Egypt, he gathers now the elders of the Israelites. And then he tells them, you know, God has told me this and this and this, that you are going to be delivered out of this bondage. Praise the wonderful name. And the people worshipped. The people rejoiced. The people marveled. The people said, it's true. Exodus 15 is coming to pass. No, Genesis 15 is coming to pass. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They said, we have been here for a long time. Amen. Thank God for that victory that we are having. Amen. Thank God for that, for that deliverance that is coming our way. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. And now Moses went to Pharaoh. And when Moses comes to Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 5, he tells Pharaoh that, now look at what Pharaoh is doing here in Exodus chapter 5. He tells Pharaoh that, let the Hebrews go that they can worship God in the wilderness. Praise the wonderful name. And then the question Pharaoh is asking, that is Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5, verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Praise the wonderful name. Watch how far Pharaoh is talking. There's a time that Christ will speak like this. Praise the wonderful name. That who is this God of yours? Who is this person that... Who is this God of Israel? Praise the wonderful name. Because when you study the Antichrist, even the words he is speaking, he speaks them in the first season, he's speaking good words. Praise the wonderful name. In the second half of the tribulation period, he's going to speak blasphemous words. Praise the wonderful name. So Pharaoh is wondering, who is this God? And, and then verse 10. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and out and their officers, and they spoke to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. 
Go ye, get your own straw where you can find it. Yet not out of your work shall be diminished. Persecution is beginning. Praise the Lord of the name. Amen. Why is persecution beginning? Because of who God is. Because of Israel and their God. Praise the Lord of the name. Because of Israel and their God. Because they want to worship that God. And then Pharaoh asks, who is that God? Praise God. And now persecution begins. Because now this issue around God, he knows that if they go, he's going to lose it. Praise the Lord of the name. And now when, now, when, 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 when now, can you imagine? Now think about this. Making bricks without material. Wanakuja wanakuambia hivi. Unafaa utengeneza matofari na upewi matope. Na penye unaishi perhaps ni mamawe mingi. So we end up doable to end up kutafu. Praise the Lord of the name. So it is not an easy thing to make bricks without straw. Until they complained, verse 15, then the officers of the children of Israel came to and cried to Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore didst thou this with thy servants? Look at how low they were. Praise the Lord of the name. And Pharaoh said, You know you are idle. You have been idle until now you want to worship God. Praise the Lord of the name. Verse 20, And they met Moses. Now these, these officers, watch their attitude when persecuted. Praise the Lord of the name. I repeat, watch how they behave when the persecution is increased by the a type of the Antichrist. Praise God. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge because you have made our servant to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. So they are complaining. They are murmuring. Praise the Lord. Why? Persecution has begun. That is something prophetic. Then this same issue will happen again. When the Antichrist will start speaking blasphemous words and say, who is that God? And start persecuting these people. That is why run. Praise the wonderful name. When we see it, run. Because persecution is coming. And now, and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, where, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated these people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? Watch the attitude of Moses again. Praise the wonderful name. Even Moses himself comes to a place and says, Why did you send me? If these people are going to speak in this manner against you. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. What has just happened? Persecution has begun. Amen. Why? Because God wants to deliver his people. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. God wants to take his people aside. Praise God. Amen. And persecution is beginning. And these people now, at first they rejoiced in Exodus 4. But when now persecution began, Began, they started playing victims. They started saying, You know, we are your servants. They started coming to a place and say, Don't persecute us. But they start come, they want to enter, they want the Antichrist to have mercy on them. They want the taskmaster not to oppress them. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But that is not the way God wants them to behave. Because it's going to happen. In Hebrews chapter 12, it has been spoken and written like this that up to now, yet you have not been tempted unto the blood. Praise the wonderful name. And that moment is coming. But God is watching their attitude at that moment. God is watching how will they conduct themselves at that moment. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That is in the middle of the week. When that covenant is broken. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because now they, they need to believe that God is going to be with them. They need to believe that despite the persecution, Amen. despite the tribulation, Amen. their attitude towards God must not change. Amen. They need to still trust and believe God. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. They need to know that God will still defend. God will still keep me. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. I think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are a, are, a, are a perfect illustration of people under the tribulation. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They, they, are no, they, they say even if, because it was an image. When you read Daniel chapter, if I could read Daniel chapter 3, verse 5. When look at this attitude of these people when they are being persecuted. They, they went through the same things the children of Israel went through. Praise the wonderful name. But there's a way they behave different. Their attitude was different. Praise God. And they're going to go through fire. And it's in the midst of the fire that the Son of Man is coming. And defending them. Praise the wonderful name. So, Daniel chapter 3, verse 5, if you're there. That at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, 
harp, sackbut, psalteries, dulcimer. I don't know these things. Very wonderful name. And all kinds of music. Listen, let ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. An image was set up. And when you see this music going forth, when you see harps, trumpets going forth, what do you do? Bow and worship it. Praise God. Verse 12. And there are certain Jews who has not set over. Now these are people complaining. Praise the wonderful name. Not all Jews bow down to it. But there were some that bowed down to it. Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. But now there are some people that, there are some accusers here. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. Remember Revelation 12 also talks of accusers. There are some accusers here that are coming to accuse these people for not bowing and worshipping that image. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. Is indeed the same thing that will happen in the future? Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. Are they being persecuted? Yes. Is, is Nebuchadnezzar here a type of the Antichrist? Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But there were certain Jews, a remnant. Praise the wonderful name. And there were certain Jews who thou hast set over their affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They have served not thy gods, nor worshipped the golden image which thou hast set up. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They have not done it. In Revelation 13, another image is set up. In Revelation 13, if you don't have that image, you cannot buy or sell. Praise the wonderful name. In Revelation 13, there's another king that they need to, to come and bow down to that king. Praise God. But these people, they were different. When you go to verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee of this matter. But... <laughs> Remember in Exodus chapter 5, did the officers of the Israelites go before Pharaoh? Did they? Did they speak like these people? Yes. No, they, they complained. Praise the wonderful name. They said, why have you increased the labors? Praise God. But these people, they, are, I, they don't care what the king is going to do. Praise God. But if, this one they say this, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Note that word, what I'm saying. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. There's a time also Pharaoh was furious. Praise the wonderful name. When an issue about a God was mentioned before him. I repeat, when an issue about this God of Israel was mentioned before Pharaoh, he became furious. Praise God. Now here Nebuchadnezzar again, the same issue is raised up. And he's going to be furious. Praise the wonderful name. What is going to follow? Persecution. What is going to follow? Persecution. Praise God. Because now, then Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visage was changed against that is his, his face against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should be that they should hit the furnace seven times more that it was that it was wont to be hit. Praise God. Amen. So they are going to be persecuted. Why? Because of the word of their testimony. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They are going to hold on. To the gospel that they had. Amen. They are going to handle their souls with patience at that moment. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast thee three men bound in the midst of fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men lose walking in the midst of fire and they have no they have no heart and they and the form of the fourth is like the son of god Amen. praise the wonderful name Amen. miracles in the midst of tribulation right. praise the wonderful name god is going to come in the midst of their persecution and deliver them Amen. not everyone will escape no. these are people being persecuted in the city yes. 
some people are going to be cast in prison. Praise on the full name. There are some that will run away, but there are some that will God will come and defend them in the city. Praise on the full name. Because when you see the armies compass Jerusalem, you should run. But we all know that not everyone will run. Praise on the full name. We all know that there are some that are going to be arrested. They are going to be placed in prison. That's why there's going to be a reward for visiting a prisoner. It will take boldness to visit someone. Praise on the full name. Amen. Because now they say, you know, you visited that person, they are connected. Praise God. Amen. But now there is a reward that is going to come by just being courageous at that season and visit this fellow Jew in prison. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. Just taking them a, a, a piece of bread, taking them a, a cup of water in that prison. Praise God. Amen. In future. Amen. Praise God. They are going to receive rewards. But we realize now that there are seasons that they are going to be persecuted. And for them to be persecuted, Pharaoh was furious. And he began persecuting the, the Jews. Praise God. When the Jews were persecuted, some stood with the God. Praise God. Some aligned themselves with Pharaoh. Praise God. Name. Nebuchadnezzar here set an image. And when these people mentioned the issue about God, praise God. Name, they persecuted them. But we see their attitude under persecution was different. And God loved this kind of people. God came down and delivered these people. God came down and became miraculous in this hard time until this Antichrist could wonder what is happening here. Did we put three people in the fiery furnace? Praise on the name. But now we see these types of the Antichrist are furious. Have we seen that? Let me, since I'm still in the book of Daniel, let me read for you Daniel chapter 11. Let me start from verse 30. Praise on the full name. Let me start from verse 18 29. At that, at the time appointed, he shall return. Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? The Antichrist, right? At the time appointed, he shall return and come towards the south, which is Egypt, but it shall not be as the former for us or as the latter. So this man has been moving up and down. Eh? This is not even the second coming. Is. This, he has just been moving all through. Praise on the name. Amen. For the ships of Shitty shall come against him. What will that do to him? Therefore he shall be grieved. Therefore he shall be furious. Therefore, like Nebuchadnezzar again, he's going to come to a place, he's going to get angry. Praise on the name. Therefore, like Pharaoh again, he's going to be angry with his people. Praise God. Because now a people are coming against him. For he, the ships of Shittim, shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. Amen. Praise on the full name. <laughs> so he's coming back and he's going to have indignation against the covenant. Amen. When he's coming back, he's coming to break the covenant. So when he's coming, it's in the middle of the week. Praise on the full name. Amen. And when he's coming, people are coming to come against him. Praise God. Amen. And when they're going to rise against him, he's going to break the covenant. Verse, verse 31. And the arms shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of, of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. Praise on the name. When he comes, when he returns, people are going to come against him. Just like the way Moses went against Pharaoh. Praise God. Just like the way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with the issue of who the true God of Israel is. Before King Nebuchadnezzar, praise God, uh, he's going to be grieved, and because of that grief, he's going to break the covenant. Praise God of the name. Because of that grief, he's going to be furious. Because of that grief, he's going to stop the sacrifices that are going to be on the temple. Praise God of the name. And now, when we see this, 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 this issue before the persecution, because now when we see that is not even the only time that uh, we see a royal family. Or a king furious. Praise God. Amen. I just remembered 1 Kings 18. 
of another woman that was furious at that time. Praise the wonderful name. So we see now that the first three and a half years of the Antichrist is going to be a peaceful time. Praise the wonderful name. They are going to be peace, peace, peace. Praise God. Psalm chapter 55, verse 20. Psalm chapter 55, verse 20. God will be there, you can help me. Psalms chapter 55. Verse 20. Let me read it for you. Psalms 55, verse 20. He has put up forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, mm -hmm. but woe was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. <laughs> his words were sweeter like butter. Praise God. His words, they, they, there's a way it attracted the people, but inside it, behind those words, were woe was in his heart. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Behind those words, it was this person wanted to be like God. From the beginning, he wanted to be like God. From the beginning, he wants to be worshipped. Praise God. And he knows one thing. His time is short. Praise the wonderful name. So we see that there's a way that the Antichrist speaks in the beginning half. And there's a way that he speaks at the last half. Praise the wonderful name. At the beginning half of the Antichrist, his, his words are smooth. His words are like butter. At the end, his words are blasphemous. At the end, he's coming and saying, who is this God that you're talking about? I'm the only one that is to be worshipped. Praise the wonderful name. And in fact, when they come against him, they will kill him. But he will resurrect. He will resurrect. And he will tell his people, because I have risen, you will also rise. Praise the wonderful name. That is what he will do. Because that is how the Bible is written. Because now there are people who are going to come against him. And when they come against him, they want, they want to bring him down. But they will marvel. Then let me read it. I see the way you are looking at me is like you read your Bibles at the church. <laughs> That's Revelation chapter chapter thirteen. Revelation chapter thirteen, verse. Uh, they could get it. They could get it. Verse fourteen. And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which he had a wound by the sword and did live. Praise the wonderful name. He had a wound by the sword and he did live. Praise God. That surprised the people. There's a scripture that I'm trying to find, but I don't know where it is. How, how it talks of he that was and is the, the one from the bottomless pit. But I'll find it for you. Verse. Verse chapter 17. Mm -hmm. This half, that, is that, that I'm going to uh, he comes from the bottomless pit. But I find it. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So he's going, people are going to marvel when the one that was had a wound by the sword is going to live again. Praise the wonderful name. So people are going to be surprised. But now the last half of the Antichrist is going to be blasphemous. His words are going to change. Praise God. He's going now to persecute these people. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because we realize now that something has happened to him. His power is being taken away. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. There is a national evangelism that Moses and Elijah and the gospel of the kingdom is being preached. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And now this, this is that Christ feels insecure and feels like he's going to lose it. Praise God. And he comes down wrath, comes angry, becomes furious about that matter. Praise the wonderful name. So when you come to the, let me read for you this, another instance where we see. Are you looking for Revelation 17, 8? 8, yeah. Revelation 17, 8. Yes. Godfrey, could you read it for me? 
The beast that thou sowest was uh -huh. and is not. Uh -huh. That means he died. Uh -huh. <laughs> and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit uh -huh. and, go into and go into perdition. And they shall dwell on the earth and shall wander <laughs> whose names were not written in the book of life uh -huh. from the foundation of the world. Uh -huh. When they behold the beast that was uh -huh. and is not uh -huh. and yet is. The, be <laughs> the beast that thou sowest was and is not. Where did you? <laughs> Praise the name. Amen. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit again and go into perdition. That's the time he's going to perdition. There was a time he was a man of sin. This is another phase of the Antichrist. Amen. Praise the name. Amen. And go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Praise the name. Amen. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Amen. It will surprise the people. Amen. It's not an easy time to be. Leaders not into tempter. They had to pray like that because a tempter is coming. When Jesus was on earth on Matthew 3, a tempter came to him. Amen. But this time the tempter is coming to them. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. And they need to pray at that time. Amen. They have to look at Jesus. How he overcome at that temptation time. Amen. Jesus had the Holy Ghost. Yet he was tempted. Yeah. That cannot prevent them from being tempted. Yeah. And the temptation here is so close that if it were possible, deceive. it will deceive the elect. Right. That is the remnant. That is not the body of Christ. Oh. The elect here is the 44,000. They choose in that time. Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. It's a tough time at that moment. Yeah. But God is watching them. God is keeping them. Yeah. If your attitude is right, God will come down. Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. We saw that in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Because God, no matter what they are going to do, God will deliver them. Yes. Because in Revelation chapter 12, God is going to carry them on the wings of an eagle yes. to the wilderness. Amen. But do you know some will still murmur in the wilderness? Yes. Do you know some will still be overcome in the wilderness? Yes. Yet they have seen the mighty hand of God. Yes. Attitude matters Amen. when being persecuted. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Your attitude always matters. When you go through betrayals, it still applies to us in our state. Yes. Praise on the full name. Yes. They had a standing. Yeah. But your attitude always matters. Yeah. When you are being persecuted, when you are being betrayed, when everyone is coming against you, watch your attitude. Yeah. Praise on the full name. Yeah. So we see now the Antichrist. These people will wonder. And this man will go with promises. This man will go with promises. Yeah. And when he is going with promises, perhaps he speaks like Jesus. He will say, I and my father are one. So some will say, show us the father that it may suffice me. <laughs> say, if, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Praise the wonderful name. He is, is that worship that he wants. He wants people to look at him and say, you are truly the son of God. That will make the devil just jump. He'll just jump wherever he is. Because that is his aim. Amen. He wants another Matthew 16. That he's going to find the people. What do people say? I am. Uh -huh. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because what is his aim? He wants to be like the most. He wants that worship. Amen. And he realized the only way for me to get this worship, I have to be a perfect imitator. Amen. I have to present something to these people that is true. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Fire will come from heaven. Praise God. Amen. So we see now at this moment, it is a task. It's a time of tribulation. Praise on the full name. Amen. But now we see now God still is miraculous in that season. Praise God. Amen. So we see now that when you read, let me read it for you. Since I'm just in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Because there's a season the Antichrist is going to be furious. Praise God. And as I'm reading Revelation chapter 12, I'd like you to put your hands in 1 Kings 18. <coughs> verse chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Did, is that what we read in Luke? Let me read. Let me read for you. You know, you, 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 human beings, we forget. But again, we remind one another. Praise God. Amen. The scripture began in Luke chapter 21. It says this, that Men's hearts, men's hearts failing them for fear. Mm -hmm. This is Luke 21, 26. And for looking after those things which are 
coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Praise the wonderful name. 12 verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. And the moon was under his feet. So let us find who this woman is. And upon her a crown of 12 stars. Really that tells you the woman. Praise the wonderful name. This woman cannot be the body of Christ. This woman can. This woman is Israel. Praise the wonderful name. So these 12 stars identifies the woman. And verse, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Fought against. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not. Neither was there a place anymore found for this man in heaven. In heaven. Praise on the name. Amen. Do you know? Let me tell you something. The devil is judged in stages. Praise on the name. The judgment of the devil is not one. After Asia. Praise God. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like thunder and lightnings fall from heaven. Praise on the name. That was a judgment, was it? Was it cast out? He was the anointed cherub, was he? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Did he lose that position? Yeah. Did he lose that, that son of the morning? Yeah. Was he called Lucifer at that moment? Yeah. Praise on the full name. Amen. But was he judged? Is that true? Right. But do we see that he could still access the regions of heaven? Yeah. We see that in the book of Kings. Yeah. When there's a lying spirit, when Jesus asks, who will go and deceive Ahab? There was someone there that could say, I will go. Yeah. Praise God. Do we see him coming after the children of God are going before in the book of Job? Do we see he still had access to the second heaven? Praise on the full name. So he still had access. And then there's another judgment. When the devil is coming down from heaven, there's another judgment he has gone through. Because now Michael has overcome him. And the only place the devil is confined is the earth. After here, Revelation 20 is giant again. And he's bound with chains in the bottomless pit. Yeah. Praise on the full name. Amen. After now the bottomless pit again. Another judgment. is cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Where he's going to be there forever and another ever and ever. Praise on the full name. Amen. So we see there's a way he's falling. Amen. But now we see in the tribulation time, there's another falling of the devil. Yes. Praise on the full name. He used to access heaven. He used to accuse the brethren day and night. Praise God. But now he's going to come down. And when he's coming down, when he's cast out of heaven, he only knows he has three and a half years remaining. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. That is verse, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Why is he referred as a dragon at this moment? Because that is a hideous creature. This man is that is cruel. This man is coming with persecution with the people. Praise God. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Amen. Are we together? Amen. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Remember our brethren. That statement is, is big. Yeah, it's very big. Our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and no. night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. This is after receiving the gospel of the kingdom. This is not the gospel of grace preached here. This is not a testimony of the gospel of grace. And they loved not their lives unto death. Now this is the time. This is the time we read in Hebrews. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Who to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea? For the devil is come down unto you. Having great wrath. Because he knows that he has but a short time. Was Nebuchadnezzar angry? Yeah. Was he furious? Mm -hmm. Did Pharaoh become furious at a particular moment? Mm -hmm. Praise on the full name. Again, something makes the dragon furious. Something makes the devil furious. Mm -hmm. 
And when he's coming down, he only knows one thing. I only have three and a half years. Because after three and a half years, another judgment is going to be bound with chains. Praise the name. So, when the dragon comes down on earth, and when the dragon saw that he was cast out on earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Who was that woman? Israel. That woman was Israel. Praise on the flame. Amen. Now he's coming, persecuting that woman. Praise on the flame. And now when this woman is persecuted, God is going to come down in a miraculous way. And the woman, and to the woman were, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. Just like the way the, in the first, in, not, let me use that, let me use that, let me use that, not, let me not use the first Exodus. Like, just like in the book of Exodus. <laughs> that is, that is neutral. In the book of Exodus, God, <laughs> in the book of Exodus, God delivered them with a mighty hand. Amen. In the wings of an eagle. Praise on of them. Another deliverance is here. And he's going to be, and the, and, and, and the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, one year, times, two years, and half a time for the, from the face of the serpent. Praise one of them. So what are we seeing here? We are seeing now that the, the devil is angry. The devil is wroth. And then the devil is coming down. He has an agent. The beast was there. But the Bible says, <laughs> verse, that, version 13, verse 2. And the dragon gave him power. <laughs> and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of bear, and his mouth was the, as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, and his seat, and great authority. At the beginning, where was the dragon? In heaven, right? He was fighting in heaven. Praise on the full name. Amen. But the beast was on earth. Yeah. He was a man of sin. Amen. Is that true? Yes. But when the beast is coming, and the, the <laughs> I'm thinking of the dove coming down. <laughs> Praise on the full name. Amen. When the dragon is cast out on earth, he meets his agent. And he gives him power. power. And then he moves into perdition. Amen. And now the people now are going to be persecuted through the vessel of the devil, which is the beast. Because there was a season the devil was not in Judas. Amen. There was a season Amen. the devil was not in Judas. Amen. But was Judas still <laughs> the man of sin? Yes. You'll get that in the book of, let me find it for you. Look chapter 22 verse 1. Praise on the name. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verse 1. Luke chapter 22, verse 1. Are you there with me? Amen. I know you've written a lot of scriptures today. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas. That is exactly what is happening in the middle of the week. When the dragon comes down and he enters into the beast. Praise on the name. And then entered Satan into Judas, whose son was Iscariot, being the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed the chief priests and captains how he might betray him. Praise on the name. Praise on the What is happening there? We are seeing something. We are seeing a transition. We are seeing now Judas becoming the son of perdition. Jesus called him that when he prayed in John 17 that all that you gave me, I lost none, save the son of perdition. Praise on the name. So we see now there's, that is the second phase of the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist now becomes that son of perdition, he begins persecuting the people. He breaks the covenant in the temple. The, the sacrifices are going to cease. Praise on the name. Amen. Because now the beast is going to be empowered. The beast now is going to move. And when the beast is moving, let me read for you. I think 
I've been saying I'll come to it and I'm still not coming to it. First Kings 18. Praise on the name. First, uh, First Kings chapter 18. There's something I want you to see here. Chapter verse 36. And it came to pass at the evening time. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. That Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. That issue is an issue that brought persecution. This issue about the God of Israel. Moses came with that issue, persecution followed. Praise on the name. And Elijah is coming the same issue. Let it be known this day that thou art the God of Israel and that, and that I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back. Praise on the name. And he goes down, and, and the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and stones, and dust, and licked up water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is the God. Amen. Praise on the name. Amen. So we see in First Kings chapter 18, this is a man, in, this is a man victorious. This is a man in power. Praise on the name. Amen. This is a man that understands this position. Amen. And he's standing. This is a man that went and presented himself before Ahab. The same man he feared. And God told him to run away from him. Amen. Praise on the name. Amen. And this man is coming with an issue of identifying who the true God is because that is what Elijah will do in the time of tribulation. Praise on the name. Because the Antichrist will be deceiving our people. So when Elijah is coming and saying, this is not the real God, it is going to offend our people. Praise God. And it's not just going to happen like that. We are going to see that Elijah is going to slaughter almost 800 prophets after this showdown. Praise on the name. A judgment is going to come to them. But you have to realize one thing. Still in 1 Kings 22, there are still prophets of Baal. Yeah. So not all of them are inhaled here. Praise on the full name. That is how God has been judging the devil. Partially, partially, partially. Until a time will come, all of them will have to go. Yeah. Praise on the full name. So we realize now in 1 Kings 18, Elijah is coming. This is a chapter of Elijah having victory. Because in the next season of Elijah, persecution is going to come. And you'll have to watch the attitude of that man. Yeah. Until God will have to come down and ask this man, what are you doing here? Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. So, but this man, he has prevailed. Has he? Yeah. Has he overcome the prophets of Baal? Yeah. Has he killed all of them? Yeah. Has fire come down from heaven? Yeah. Have the people known who the true God is? Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. Was, there, was there another showdown in heaven? Yeah. Did Michael prevail over the dragon and his angels? Yeah. Did Elijah here prevail? Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. Was there a showdown here at Mount Carmel? Mm -hmm. Was there also a showdown in heaven? Yeah. And after the showdown, what followed? There was a judgment in that showdown. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. The devil was cast out. The devil was wroth and angry. Why am I cast out? Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. And the same thing is going to happen here. When Jezebel hears this story, praise God. Yeah. The next chapter, when Jezebel hears, when Ahab comes and Ahab gives Jezebel a story. This is 19 verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. <laughs> you know what? This man slaughtered all the prophets. Even the Bible says that the 400 prophets of Baal and four other hundred prophets that he used of the grooves that were in Jezebel's table. Praise on the full name. So Jezebel is like, what is happening here? He is now, uh, Ahab is telling the story. Perhaps Jezebel, you know, even when the spirit is talking about the church that Tira, he mentions it as the death of Satan. Praise on the name. But he never talked about Ahab. Ahab was a, I used to think Ahab was a, was a somehow local man. But he had a wife that was hot. <laughs> His wife was not, even until they are warned of this woman again. Praise on the name. This wife was hot. This Ahab, when he saw the slaughter, he didn't even rebuke Elijah. Praise on the name. But this man is passing a warning. 
He's telling Elijah, Elijah, my friend, you have 24 hours. Tomorrow at a time like this, you are going to be done. Praise on the name. But the vision is going to follow this man. Because you have to understand that the life of Elijah is prophetic. Praise on the name. Amen. The life of prophets in the Bible matter. Amen. You will find God telling Ezekiel to cut his hair. And telling now, since you've cut your hair, separate your hair like this, like this, like this. And then he tells him, now go speak to the children of Israel. Now umenda ukiongea ukiwa kipara. But God used your hair to speak something. Amen. Praise on the name. So when you see the life of Elijah, it is instrumental. Because Elijah here types the remnant are people that in the midst of apostasy they still held on to God. Amen. Praise on the name. In the midst of a world that is falling, they still held on to God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we see now when he still stood on God and now Jezebel hears it. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and me or, and, and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. Praise on the full name. Amen. This man is going to be threatened. Praise God. Amen. And you have to realize why is he threatened? Because he's against a form of worship that is not a godly worship. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And you have to understand this same spirit of Jezebel was in Herodias. When a man came and spoke against another union that was not a, that was against who God is. Praise on the full name. Amen. Because again in the time of tribulation, Elijah is going to speak against that covenant. Amen. Because that covenant is not the true covenant. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. And Elijah is going to be against that covenant. Amen. Just like Jezebel. You know, just, just like John the Baptist. You know, when, when they could speak about, they always say this. I had this, this joke going forward. But it's a, it's, a, it's a good one. That when John the Baptist preached about uh, uh, deceivers about repentance when he preached about backbiting and all those things, his head was not at stake. Praise on the flame. His head was not at stake. That was it was good when he preached on those things. But he meant when he mentioned that covenant, that agreement that was there between Herodias and, 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 and his cult, and he it brought trouble. Praise on the flame. Because again in the time of tribulation, there will be a covenant that is against God's laws. Praise on the name. And he's going to speak against that covenant. And now at this time, Elijah will be killed. Right now, Elijah is going to pass. Praise on the name. Amen. But in Revelation 11, he is going to die. Because now the Antichrist has power. The, the dragon has empowered that Antichrist. And he's going to really die. Praise on the name. Because of speaking against that covenant that these people have entered in the first three and a half years. That they have ended in the disguise of the new covenant, which actually is not the new covenant. Amen. So we see now persecution comes to this man. And when now persecution comes, Elijah comes to a place. He forgets, or he's black. I don't know. We all come to this place, my brother, my sister. We all come to this place. We all come to a place where we are blinded to our previous victories. Praise on the flame. Where you forgot that this is the same Elijah that called rain from heaven. Amen. This is the same Elijah that shut the heavens. Amen. This is the same Elijah that in the previous chapter he was an overcomer. Praise on the flame. Amen. In the previous chapter he was a he was a force to be reckoned with. Until even when Jesus the disciples saw Jesus, they thought he was Elijah. Praise on the flame. Amen. Because Elijah was a force that every individual record around the force. Amen. But it came in First Kings chapter 19. Something happened to this man. Praise on the full name. Amen. And I want to submit to you, we all come to this place. Amen. Our standing, yes, we are complete in Christ. Amen. Our standing, we are accepted in Christ. Oh, yeah. Praise on the full name. Amen. Our standing, we are complete in him. Amen. Our standing, we are saved by grace. Amen. Our standing, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings Amen. in heavenly places Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. But something happens in First Kings 19 that is going to break down the heart of this man. Praise on the full name. Amen. Because now there the, the, the are forces coming against this person. The Bible says that I send you in the midst of wolves. This is, you know, there are some scriptures in the Bible that you are so relevant. When you read them in the Gospels, you can just pass them. But when you look at the prophetic timeline of the children of Israel, 
These scriptures will make sense. Amen. When Jesus says, I sent you in the midst of wolves, be wise as serpents and be harmless as a dove. Because you are going to be in places where the authorities are going to be against you. They are going to be in that place. God does not expect them to come and, and burn us and prostrate and say, I'm against you. You know, you can think about how it's going to be. You know, nowadays mass action is a, is a thing that we say is in the constitution. So perhaps mass action will be there, will be there at that time. Praise on flame. And when they're dealing with the Antichrist, you know, he'll kill them. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. God doesn't want people to be careless at that time of tribulation. Amen. He wants them to be wise. Amen. Know how to deal with this force. Amen. Be wise as a serpent. Amen. Be harmless as a dove. Amen. Know when to be harmless. Know when to be wise. Amen. Praise on the name. Amen. So we see now Elijah has come to a place now that he is let me, read, let me read it for you. Let me, and when he saw that, when he saw that, this is verse 3. When he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Praise on the full name. He's separating. He's running away. Praise on the full name. He is running away. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey, that's a, a long distance, into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested of himself that he might die and said, it is enough. <laughs> what did he say? It is enough. What did he say? It is enough. It is enough. Yeah. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Sure. Is this the same Elijah? He's a preacher, my friend. Praise on the name. Amen. He's a preacher in First Kings 18 under the anointing. He was so powerful. Praise God. Amen. He could speak against that force with power. Amen. But when persecution started coming on this man, he even forgot the victories he had. He said, I'm like my fathers. Yet he's not like his fathers. He was different, was he? Amen. Was he? But he said, you know, God, it's like my efforts are not bearing any fruits. I've done a lot of things, but it's like people are not changing their hearts. Every time, every time the kingdom is coming against me, it's like I'm just like them. My labors, I'm not a productive individual. Praise on the full name. That's what this man is thinking. He says, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like my father's. It is so easy to fall in this trap now. Praise on the name. Amen. This now I'm bringing it to all of us. That it is easy to fall in this trap. It is easy to come to a place where you forget the victories you've had as a person. That is why God always reminded them. Isn't I that delivered you with a mighty hand in Egypt? God always takes them back to the victories he's been having with them. That don't, don't watch your present circumstance. True, in the time of tribulation, they are going to go through a perilous time. They are going to go through a time, a pain that has never been. But they need to remember. They need to remember the things God has done for them. They need to remember their victories. They need to remember the testimonies they have had. This man needs to remember the things God has done for him. And hold on to that. Because they need to wait in hope. Because the Bible says that young men are going to grow well. People are going to come to a place and faint. But those that wait, there's a patience that you need in the time of tribulation. They will need that. But again, you have to understand that we also go through tribulation. But it is not the great tribulation. The great tribulation is a specific time called Jacob's trouble in the future. Praise on the name. But Paul, when he was in prison, he said, I'm also going through tribulation. When he was in the... Let me read it for you. When I read it from the epistles, you know I'm home, right? Yes. When I'm going out here, <laughs> Sam will try and say I'm waiting. Now I'm home. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Romans chapter chapter 5, verse 2, verse 1. Let me start from verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. And not 
only so, but we glory in tribulation. Amen. Tribulation? Yes. Tribulation? Also. Tribulation? Amen. Tribulation also. Mm -hmm. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. And hope make it not a sin because the love of God is shed abroad Amen. in our hearts Amen. by the Holy Ghost Amen. which is given unto Amen. us. Amen. Paul knew. Amen. Praise the name. Amen. And again when you go to the book of, let me read for you in the same, same epistle uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 this is, Paul, this is Paul talking. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable unto conformable unto his death. Praise on the name. Paul talks about something. Paul talks about the fellowship of his sufferings. Praise God. I'm still looking for a scripture that uh, there's a scripture I'm looking for in the epistles. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 13. God feel good read it for me. Ephesians 3. 13. Ephesians 3 13. Wherefore I desire that ye fail not at my tribulations hey. for you, which is your glory. Mm -hmm. Read it again, please. Wherefore I desire that ye fail not at my tribulations for you which is for which is your glory praise on for them paul recounts his experiences his experiences and his even in prison and he says this one this 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 he calls them the tribulation praise on for them that is why i'm saying that as, as individuals there are some seasons we will go through that are tough times that are seasons of trouble praise on for them in Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 when paul talks about the the days before the rapture don't confuse that uh, as another last phase. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days, the last days before the rapture, right? Don't think it's there. <laughs> the last days of Israel. Praise God. Amen. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, coveters, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away from praise on the name. Paul knows perilous times are coming. Yes. That's why when we see Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, it is a season that we may also come to it at some point or another Amen. if you have not been to it already. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. In one or another in our, in our growth, in our journey as Christians, we come to this place. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But you need to watch your attitude at that moment. You need to watch your attitude when things are not the way you thought they should be. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. You need to watch your attitude when you are doing something and you don't see results. Amen. Still watch your attitude. Amen. Don't give up along the way. Amen. Psalms chapter 27 verse 13 says, says this. Psalms 27 verse 13. Psalms 27 verse 13. Says this. I would have fainted. I would have fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord Amen. in the land of the living. Amen. I would have fainted. Amen. I would have fainted Amen. if I didn't believe. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. I know circumstances are not as they are or they should be. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But despite the persecution, Amen. I'm watching my attitude. Amen. I want to believe one thing that I'm going to see the goodness of God Amen. in the land of the living. Amen. Perhaps Elijah is there, he's seeing the world is falling. Amen. He sees the, 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 the Israel at the depth of Satan. Amen. But he's saying one thing. Amen. David understood Amen. one thing. Amen. Do you think David went through a good, a good time? No. David was persecuted. David was betrayed by his brothers. Oh, yeah. David, his son, came and chased him from the throne. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. David saw things that 
brought her spirit down. He came to a place and said, I am weak. I am weak. Though I am anointed. Praise the wonderful name. But here David is saying, I would have fainted. Meaning David was strong. What kept, what kept David strong in that time of persecution? He believed one thing. I'm going to see the goodness of God. I would have fallen apart. I would have entered into depression. Elijah is going to a place that is going to think, Oh God, it is enough. Take my life away. Praise the wonderful name. But David says one thing. I would have fainted. If I did not believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living, I would have fainted. Praise the wonderful name. But this is going to be a tough time for these people. But God is going to expect them to come to a place and have hope. And wait patiently and say that I'm still going to see the goodness of God. Despite the challenges, verse 4 it says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested of himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I'm not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water in his head. And he did eat and drink and laid down again. Look how low this man had come. Praise the wonderful name. He laid down again. Verse. Seven. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because thy journey is too great for thee. And he rose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat for forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. God said, I'm not going to use an angel anymore. This man is like he's going just to be in his attitude until I come down myself. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And the Lord came to him and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Amen. For the children of Israel have I forsaken. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. Amen. Thrown down thine altars Amen. and slain thy prophets with the sword. Even I, even I only, am left and they seek my life to take it away. Is that what will happen prophetically in the future? Will they leave the covenant? Yes. Will the prophets be slain? Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. We see another condition coming. But Elijah should not be here. For God asking him, what are you doing here? Because the angel said, you have a great journey ahead of you. Your ministry is not yet end yet. But this man, because of his attitude, he wants to, he wants to sabotage the plan of God. Praise the wonderful name. He's playing a victim at this season. And then, you know what? Something strange. And he said, verse 11, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. God expected Elijah to go on the top of the mountain. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But where is Elijah going? Okay. Elijah is going on a cave. But God said, go, this is where you should have gone to begin with. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. You don't have to feel sorry about yourself. Quit feeling sorry about yourself in this place and go in the right place. Praise God. Yeah. And God comes down after Elijah still remained in the cave. And it was so, this is verse 13, when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face and his mantle, this after hearing the earthquake, the thunderings, the lightning, and a still small voice, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And then he went back. He went back to what he said again. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because of the children of Israel. I have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain down thy prophets with a sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life and to take it. And the Lord said unto him, Go return to Damascus, the way to the wilderness of Damascus, when thou comest, anoint Hazael, anoint Jehu, and anoint Elisha. Praise the wonderful name. There was something this man was supposed to do. But this man was feeling sorry for himself under persecution. Praise the wonderful name. This man was, this man had fainted. 
But thank God he could not kill himself. He asked God to kill him. <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. He said, God, come and kill me. <laughs> because I don't want to live anymore. But what am I saying? This attitude should not be taken by any individual when you are in a situation that is not a good situation. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. When persecution came, when persecution will come to these people, when the remnant are going to be persecuted, they need to hold fast. Amen. The Bible says, do not hide your light. Why are they going to hide their light? Because it is going to be suicidal to walk in the streets of Jerusalem and say, I am, I am the Lord God of Israel. Praise the wonderful name. At that time, so what are they going to do? They are going to hide their light. Praise the wonderful name. But they need not to lose their faith. They need to keep holding on. They need to know that he is still going to keep them. He is still going to sustain them. Praise the wonderful name. He is still, because at that moment, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Praise the wonderful name. The heart of the Antichrist also is going to be hardened. But these people need to know it is for the glory of God. Amen. When they were in, standing before the Red Sea, murmuring and murmuring, God told Moses that for my own glory's sake, I'm going to harden the heart of Pharaoh. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That I can show my magnificent, my magnificent power Amen. and my might. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So don't worry. Don't be intimidated. Don't be cast down. Don't give up. When persecution come along your way. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Don't give up when betrayals come around your way. Always know one thing. Hold on to the goodness of God. Amen. Always remember Amen. where God has brought you from. Always that is why God always reminded them of where they came from. Amen. God always reminded them of the things he had done for them. Praise the wonderful name. But we see what is happening in First Kings 19. Elijah becomes blind a little bit. And he forgets the things God had done for him. He forgets the power. He forgets his standing. Praise the wonderful name. But when we remember our standing, when we remember, the Bible says, when judgment was striking Egypt, when they remembered that blood, God kept them and God sustained them. Amen. They should have held on that. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Paul recounts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. As I read my last scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul recounts the, 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 the experiences of these people in the wilderness. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And he says that these, these stories matter. He says these stories are for our examples that we should learn from Amen. them. First Corinthians chapter 10. Immediately he has talked about the state, which is in 927, that he doesn't want to be cast away. And then he goes forth to First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in a cloud in the sea. Amen. And did all it. What is Paul doing? Paul is showing how God was with these people in every step. Amen. Praise God. Amen. In every step of their journey, God was with them. Amen. And did all drink of the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, Amen. and that rock was Christ. Amen. But which, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. The wilderness overthrew them. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But we do not be such kind of people. What does Paul say? Now these things were our examples that to the intent we should not last after evil things as they also lasted. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. God expects that we should not be overthrown by our wildernesses. Amen. Praise God. That we should rejoice always. And again I say rejoice. Amen. Paul wrote his happiest epistle when he was in prison. When he was in chains. He thought of his say rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. And again I say rejoice. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we see he comes down verse 10 and says that neither mama ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things, he repeats again, now all these things happened unto them for examples, that they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So what are we seeing here as I'm finishing? 
despite the challenges and the circumstances being so bad and so unbearable, they need to have a good attitude towards God. Praise the wonderful name. Because already God has kept delivering them. Already God has been with them time and time again. Praise the wonderful name. And when you look at the attitude of the three Hebrew children, their attitude ensured that the blessings of God will still with them. Praise God. They knew that he will still defend us. He will still fight for us. Praise God. And we as, as members of the body of Christ, we are going to come through perilous times and times that are going to bring our spirits down. Praise God. But we all need to have in our hearts, Paul says in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1, that we faint not. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Don't faint. Amen. Don't faint. Amen. And if you want to hold on to God Amen. in the midst of places and in the midst of challenges, always remember one thing, Amen. the goodness of God. Amen. Always take your mind back Amen. and say, surely goodness and mercy Amen. shall follow me Amen. all the days of my life. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That in this land of the living, Amen. the economy is bad, the circumstances are tough, diseases are there. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But I David says, I would have fainted if I did not believe on the goodness of God. Amen. This morning, let us believe on the goodness of God. Amen. Let us believe that God is still good. But in the midst of everything that is not good, Amen. I'm still going to believe on the goodness of God. Amen. I don't want to see any evidence. Amen. I don't want to see anything. Amen. But I need to have faith and believe on the goodness of God. Amen. That in every step that I'm going to go through, I'm still going to believe Amen. on the goodness of God. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Let us not despise it. It's how despised. It's how had a bad attitude towards his birthright. Praise the wonderful name. Did he lose it? Yes. Did he lose it? Amen. Did he chase it later? Amen. With sorrow? Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But let us watch our attitude Amen. when we are always fainting. Amen. At the time of tribulation and future time, they will faint. We also in our walk, we are going to come to a place and are going to faint. But we have to have one hope in our heart Amen. that we don't want to faint. Praise the wonderful name. We are, this is a time where people are suspicious of everything. People are fake. Betrayals are everywhere. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And Elijah expected God to come and validate his situation. <laughs> his story state. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But we want to be a different kind of people. Amen. With a different kind of attitude. Amen. Like David who could choose Amen. something that God didn't say. That in the midst of chastisement, Amen. David could still say, I'm still going to fall on you. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That I'm still going to choose you. Amen. I know there are some three things that you have enumerated that I can choose from. But I'm going to choose to follow the hand of God. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. When things are not going well, we are still going to believe on the goodness of God. Amen. When things are not going to be as we anticipated them to be, we are still going to believe on the goodness of God. Amen. When the world has lost hope, because Amen. it is in the land of the living, Amen. in the it was the depth of Satan, Amen. according to how Revelation describes Amen. that moment. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But what are we talking about? We are still believing. Amen. We are still hopeful. Amen. We do. We have faith because that is what is characterized of we as Gentiles. Amen. Our strength as Gentiles is our faith. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They need to repent Amen. for that blessing to come upon them. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But we, we just need to believe oh, yes. and let keep believing. Let's keep strengthening our faith. Amen. Let us keep hearing on the goodness of God. Amen. Wherever there are stories, Paul says, whatever things are good, oh, yeah. whatever things are true, yeah. whatever things are of good report, yeah. these are the things you need to think about yeah. to maintain your atmosphere. Yeah. Because what you believe, yeah. when you believe on the goodness of God, yeah. you shall see it. Yeah. When you believe it, yeah. you shall see it. Yeah. So let us keep believing it. Yeah. We are going to see God's deliverances. Yeah. We are going to see God's breakthrough. Praise on our name. And they, in that time, Amen. their attitude matters before God. Amen. So let us tell God to keep being with us. May God keep strengthening us. May God keep walking with us. Amen. Times are going to be tough. Amen. But let us not go the other way. Amen. Let us maintain our attitude. Amen. Let us have a positive thinking. Amen. Let us watch our mental capacities. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Let us be transformed. Amen. By the renewing of our mind. Let us grow from one glory to another. Amen. Always anticipating the goodness of God. When, it, when marriages are failing, we still believe on the goodness of God. Amen. When nations are failing, when Amen. corruption is there, we still believe on the goodness of God. Amen. When there are hypocrisy everywhere, we still believe on one thing. Amen. The goodness of God. Amen. Let us not come and 
the God will not validate your state. As we are, let us stand up. As I'm saying this, let us stand up. God won't validate your state. When God came down and found Elijah in a sorry state, Elijah, <laughs> yes, he was persecuted. Yes, the situations and the times were not good. Praise on the name. But God wanted this man keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. There's always that highest mark of your calling that you want to press on. So let us keep maintaining that attitude, that positive attitude. Let us all keep believing on the goodness of God. In this land of the living poles, David says, I would have fainted. We won't faint. When we keep believing on the goodness of God, we won't faint. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Just give him a hand of praise. Just keep praying and say, God, I still believe on you. I believe on your goodness. I believe on your goodness over my life. Just pray for yourself. Just speak for yourself. Like that woman with the blood issue. He spoke for himself, for herself. He said, if I could buy, if I could but just touch the helm of his garment. Just believe that there's something good that is going to happen to you. This coming week, this month, this year. Don't give up. Don't be in despair. Just keep believing. When they are going to be persecuted at that time. When it's going to be dark times. When Elijah was in that moment. Job chapter 14 says that man, the days of man are few and full of trouble. But we have comfort in the Psalms. Like the psalmist, we want to stand and say, I'm still going to believe on the goodness of God. May God keep blessing us as we stand together in believing on goodness. As we stand together and say, God, regardless of the challenges, the paths, the roots you lead me, I'm going to believe on you because you are my shepherd. Oh God, we thank you. We honor you.
has a wilderness. All the Christians, Father, have that moment, oh God. The place, oh God, of weariness, oh God. The place where they are fasting, there is no food. It's like they are losing it, oh God. But they said we shall fall in the hands of God. And even if, Father, we understand as our parallel is being drawn by the preacher today to show us something, even if, Father, that, oh God, Paul talked about a tribulation. Sometimes when you think you've waited too long and it's not working, but God comes down and says, there is something I'm doing for you. There is some work you need to do. There is still 40 days ahead of you. There is something you need to expose about the enemy. Father, I want to pray for the believers. Heavenly Father, Lord God, you will encourage each one of them, oh Father. They will know it's not over yet. They are asking for more strength, oh God, that they will not fail again, oh Father. Weak but anointed. Heavenly Father, discouraged, oh God, but not cast out, oh Father. Waiting upon the promises, Lord Jesus, that Heavenly Father, we shall stand there to be the witnesses of your word, Lord. We thank you for the minister. We thank you for your people, Lord. Heavenly Father, you've been encouraged, oh Father, that if I'm in the hands of God, I don't care. I want to suffer, but I want to be sure in the presence of the Lord. There will be famine, but in the presence of the Lord. I want to thank you, Lord God, for your people, Lord. Bless them, O oh Father, and keep them, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.